I think by now we have the STEMI identification thing down pat. Often overlooked or identified, but brushed off, are ischemic changes that indicate an acute coronary syndrome. Acute coronary syndrome is where blood flow through the coronaries is reduced and the part of the heart fed by that part of the coronaries becomes ischemic and either dies or doesn't function appropriately. STEMI aside, there are a couple different flavors of acute coronary syndrome. Stable angina is chest pain that is relieved with rest or nitroglycerin. It is predictable in nature. So you have a 54-year-old guy with a cardiac history. He's moving a couch. He gets chest pain, pops a nitro, sits down, and gets better. Unstable angina is a bigger deal. Its onset is unpredictable and often occurs while at rest and at random intervals. If the patient has a history of stable angina, an onset of unstable angina may feel completely different or could be worse and it usually doesn't get better with rest and even with nitroglycerin. A non-STEMI is when you have an infarct that does not show ST elevation, hence the term non-STEMI or N-STEMI. The patient will have chest discomfort or some other type of anginal equivalent but will not have ST segment elevation on their 12 lead and when the labs come back their troponin will be elevated indicating myocardial damage. NSTEMI actually has worse morbidity and mortality than STEMI. One of the biggest reasons is that we are so laser focused on identifying STEMIs, providing early notification to the cath lab and reducing door to balloon time for angioplasty and stending that we end up sitting on the NSTEMI patient. These patients end up getting admitted to cardiology and then maybe later on, oh, we'll do a cath. I would recommend that everyone read the OMI manifesto where a group of docs wrote a fantastic paper about how NSTEMI and other forms of ACS are not addressed appropriately and how the paradigm of STEMI, 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 no ST elevation on the 12 lead, yeah, whatever, needs to change. So how do we identify these acute coronary syndrome cases? Well, obviously a good history and physical exam but the National Registry or whoever is testing you isn't going to ask you to identify that the ACS patient is having chest pain. So let's talk about the EKG findings. Concerning signs for ischemia and that OMI are ST depression and T-wave inversions. Both are concerning signs for myocardial ischemia. Keep in mind that an isolated flipped T-wave in lead 3 can be a normal variant in some people. Don't ask me why. My old medical director used to say that he was taught in medical school that the T in 3 is free. Other than that, ST depression or T-wave inversions alert you to acute coronary syndrome. Also, flat T-waves can indicate ischemia, but they can also be a chronic and non-acute finding. Simply put, flat T waves pique my interest. If they're having chest pain along with flat T waves, I'm suspicious for ACS. But I really get suspicious if I see those T wave inversions or ST depression. You were probably taught that AVR is a reference lead and you can't use it to identify STEMI. Yes, but no. AVR has long been overlooked and it is finally getting the recognition it deserves. If you have ischemic changes in the EKG and ST elevation in AVR, then that is 90% sensitive for the patient having severe multivessel disease. Treating these patients, give them aspirin. It prevents platelet aggregation and it is the only med we give that has a clear benefit on outcomes. Nitroglycerin works. It works very well on chest pain, so definitely give it. However, evidence that nitro reduces infarct size and makes any different in outcomes is at best scant. Don't routinely give these patients oxygen unless they are short of breath or hypoxic. It has a vasoconstrictor effect so that days of 15 liters of high flow O2 for everyone with chest pain are over. Morphine, out. Worse outcomes all around. Don't give it. We give fentanyl out like it's candy, but there is some data out there that it may inhibit meds that are given in the cath lab. That being said, cath lab nurses will tell you that they too give fentanyl out like it's candy.